All right, extra problem number two. This one's going to be computing a truth table for the following gate circuit. So we've got two inputs here, A and B, and they're going to a lot of different gates in this sort of interesting circuit here. And the truth table is this thing down here. So what we're looking for is what the output Y will be as a function of these inputs A and B. So when A is 0 and B is 0, we're going to figure out what the output would be and put that there. When A is 0, B is 1, we're going to put the output there, etc. Okay, so these logic gates represent logical operations. The the codes underneath are chips that you could find these gates on. So the 74HC08N would be uh, would be an AND gate. It's really like the 74 anything series 08 is um, is a is a dip socket that involves some AND gates. Then this would be NOT gates. Here's where you can find the NOR gates in the O2 series. The, the XOR gate is kind of an exotic one. That's the 86 series. And the OR gate, believe it or not, is kind of exotic. That's the 32 series that I found this from. There's other series that you could find these in, but this is a particular one that I've got listed out here. Okay, so the, the numbers underneath are not so important. Just focus on the symbols that we've got. So an AND gate, NOT gate, an, uh, a NOR gate. So that's an OR gate with an inversion at the end of it and an XOR gate. So the truth tables for those gates are from the lecture notes here, or the uh, section 13.3 in the textbook. So an AND gate will have a truth table kind of like this. It only returns true if both of the inputs were true, otherwise it returns false. The OR gate will return true as long as any one of the inputs is true. The only time it returns false is if both inputs were false. The NOT gate just inverts whatever its single input was, so it returns true when its input was false and vice versa. The XOR gate, the OR exclusive OR, returns true as long as exactly one of its inputs were true. If, uh, if both its inputs are the same, so both true or both false, then it returns false. You can an Another way to think of an XOR gate is um, is a test of whether the inputs are different. So if both inputs are different, either one true and the other false or vice versa, then it returns true. The NAND gate is the inverse of an AND gate. So it returns false whenever an AND gate would return true and vice versa returns true whenever an AND gate would return false. And the NOR gate is similarly the inverse of an OR gate. It returns false whenever the OR gate would return false true and vice versa. So these are exactly the same as AND gates followed by inverters and OR gates followed by inverters. All right, so back to the problem. The easiest way to analyze this rather than jumping right from the inputs to the outputs is to assign some intermediate things along the way. So uh, for instance, we can put in another column here and then output what the output of U6A would be, which is our, our XOR gate. So U6A is getting A and B as its inputs. So now we just look over at A and B and then write down the truth table for an XOR gate. So that's going to be 0 and, uh, and 1, 1, and 0. Okay, now we've got, we've got that figured out. So we can, uh, when, we, when we need it, we'll have the input to this NOR gate over there figured out too. So let's add in some more columns here. So how about U... Uh, U3A, or let's just go one step at a time, U7A. So what's going to be the output of this AND gate? That's ANDing both those inputs together. So that's going to be 0, 0, 0, and 1. And then if we invert that, the output of U3A there, U3A, is not the output of this AND gate, which was, which was this column. So that's going to be 1, 1, 1, and 0. Okay, so now we've got both of the inputs to this NOR gate figured out, and that's the inputs in this column and this column. So if we take these two and we were to OR them together, then we would get a 1 as long as any one of them is a 1. If you were to NOR them, then you'll get a 0 in that case, and the only time you get a 1 is if both the inputs were a 0. So that means that U2A is returning a, uh, a zero unless we are in this situation when both of those inputs were a zero. Okay, now the, the last thing, y, is now an or 
between U2A and actually A. So whenever A is a 1 or U2A is a 1, we're going to get a 1. So that would be in this or this situation and nothing in that situation. So all of this complicated logic turns out to be equivalent to just reproducing A. Right. So this is this is why analyzing these circuits is is pretty useful because, you know, suppose some designer proposes this logic chain and you find yourself working through a series of decisions that's all up to this and then at the end of it, if you analyze it, you say, "Hey, wait a minute, hang on. This output is only ever true whenever A is true and B doesn't matter." Well, you could simplify things a lot if you could get rid of all of that and then just tie A to the output. There you go. Cost savings. Time for promotion.